On this 11th day of October at Martyr Shrine in Tay, Ontario, the National Shrine to the Canadian Martyrs, we celebrate with you the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. During these difficult times, when the faithful are unable to physically participate in the Holy Mass, the Jesuit Fathers of this holy site remain united with you in prayer, asking for the intercession of St. Jean de Brebeuf and his companions, that each of you might find healing, renewal of spirit, and peace. <laughs> A religious community who share common life at table, at labor, and at prayer, a family of faith, the Jesuits here share in this Mass for you and encourage you to continue practicing safe measures of physical distancing and all other measures proposed by our government during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today's Mass is celebrated for Joseph Tree Ngo, Simon and family, Bonnie Miney, Stepan Rukavansky, Vaslav Kazmirovsky, and Lucy Tuch, Jurgen Masarenas, and the intentions of Robert and Connie Green, as well for, as for the intentions of our Martyr Shrine Association and our benefactors. Our presider is Father Stephen LeBlanc, and our co celebrants are, is Father Patrick Koldrick. We begin with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. As always, we pause at the beginning of Mass to ask that God's grace touch those areas of our lives and of our activities that may be in need of God's forgiveness and healing. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples 
a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response is, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul forever. I, I will shall dwell, dwell in the house, house of, the Lord, of the Lord my whole, whole life, life long. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Response. I shall, I shall dwell, dwell in the in house, house of, the Lord, of the Lord my whole life long. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Response. I, I shall dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. <clears throat> response. I, I shall dwell, dwell in, in the, the house, house of the Lord, Lord my whole life long. <clears throat> the second reading is taken from the book of the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have heard the secret of being well fed and of going hungry of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. My God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was outraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. 
Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. On this mountain, the message today in these short ten verses of the prophecy of Isaiah begins and ends with that phrase, on this mountain. For all peoples, the Lord will prepare a feast. Surely the promised rich food and well-aged wines cannot apply literally to life here below for all peoples. Knowing as we do, some in their own personal experiences, knowing as we do the dire straits in which many millions live. If our God had meant that he was to accomplish this here on earth, we might think of God as a laughing God, laughing at his people for being foolish enough to believe that each and every person on this earth at all times on the earth would experience the fulfillment of such a prophecy. In the text put before us today by the church in the Holy Gospel, God our Lord, Jesus Christ, God made flesh, gives us something of an insight into what God wants for us in his parable on the kingdom of heaven. Note that he is not predicting heaven on earth. The celestial gathering which he describes is indeed open to all, symbolized in that Old Testament text where the prophet suggests that the king tells the servants to gather anyone, good and bad, into the wedding feast. However, one's place in it requires a degree of suitability on the part of the participants. One must be, as the imagery says, properly attired, so to speak. It's not a gathering in which people simply wander in and have a free-for-all of food and drink. And here again, imagery colors the scene. Wedding garments are needed, we are told. But surely we don't take that literally either to suggest that people need a particular kind of clothing, physical garments, before they will enter heaven. It's talking about a, a kind of readiness which that imagery proposes. And they are gathered, we are told, for a wedding feast, a festival of love, wherein the wedding that is being celebrated is not of a human man with a human woman in what we mean on earth by a wedding, but a wedding between the human family and God that we are, or we are to become, the bride of God. And we too need to be prepared, as does a bride at her own human wedding, or we may find ourselves out of place. It is not that God 
chooses to exclude people is that people are not ready to live in heaven where we will become, as St. Paul says elsewhere, we will become exactly like God. We will become totally loving. And if we have not learned and practiced a life of love, we ourselves would be out of place, not a matter of God pushing us out. We would be uncomfortable to be surrounded by people who, despite any of our own human shortcomings, want to love us always, in every situation, for all eternity. And so the preparation to participate in that great feast, which again the prophet suggests is symbolized by wonderful food and drink, is in fact an eternal love feast where we will be together with the God who loves and has loved us for all eternity in feast in which we are asked and invited to join. So it's a warning, if you will, but a wise bit of guidance where God is challenging and inviting us to make sure that before the day comes when we pass from life in this world, on this earth, into eternity with God and all his holy ones, that we have become the most loving people we can be. And of course, we can't do that on our own. If we could, we don't need God. We keep coming back to God as we do at the beginning of Mass and so many other times in our lives, admitting to God, I've tried to be a loving person and I've failed at times, but I ask you out of your great love, God, to forgive me, to heal me, to make up what is lacking in my love for you and for others. Let us join now standing, if you will, if possible, in professing together the faith that we have in our God, who is our loving Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and their Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now, in faith, bring before God the needs of his people. Let us pray for the Church, a community committed to faith and justice, we pray to the Lord. For the leaders of nations called to effective action on behalf of the poor, we pray to the Lord. For people uprooted by war or natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. For our own communities, families, work settings, parish settings, called to act justly and lovingly, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those suffering directly or otherwise from the consequences of the pandemic experienced all over the world. That God draw those who have died to himself, that he strike strengthen the sick and suffering and support those who are supporting them, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, you know all our needs, and you answer them in and through Jesus Christ. Give us eyes and ears of faith, that we may see and hear the answers you give, and accept them in peace through Christ our Lord. St. John de Brebeuf, St. Isaac Jogues, St. Gabriel Lallemand, St. Antoine Daniel, St. Charles Garnier, St. Noel Chabanel, St. René Goupil, St. Jean de Lalande, St. Catherine Tecaquitha, St. Joseph, patron of our martyrs, Holy Mary, queen of martyrs. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, yes, uh, and whom you called, uh, Lord, your church that is spread throughout this whole world, and to bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. We also remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph and the Apostles, the Canadian Martyrs, St. Ignatius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign and wish for God's peace in our lives. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should but only say the word in my soul. living together as members of a community of priests in one household, we are aware of the blessing it is for the five of us to have mass together, and we thank you for taking the time to share in it with us. Below on our website are other ways that we hope to be present with you. We offer you the option of having a candle lit on your behalf by a Jesuit, we offer you a weekly reflection for your personal prayer, a weekly bulletin, and an opportunity for you to make a donation in support of Martyr Shrine. Though we are not able to open our gates to you, our pilgrims, we are praying for you now when we look forward to welcome you with open arms in May of 2021. Until then, we hope that you and yours remain safe and healthy as we all practice physical distancing during these difficult times. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bow your heads and ask God's blessing. Through the prayers of God's holy martyrs, may the Lord bless you and protect you all the days of your life. May he grant you health of mind and body, answer all your prayers, and bestow on you always the peace of God's kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.